Hello, welcome back for another Curbstone TV review. I'm Rob and today you are lucky enough to join us in the latest Maserati Gran Turismo. And if I didn't tell you that this was an electric car, you would not know it because it looks exactly like the petrol version Maserati Gran Turismo. And that's something that I really like because we have a lot of cars coming out these days that look completely different, completely different design. And that's why in general, we don't really appreciate electric cars because they have all these funny and weird designs. Maserati didn't do this with the Gran Turismo, the Fulgore. Full electric, Fulgore meaning lightning in Italian. And that's already the first little detail that shows that it's an electric car. We have also a few different styling elements in the front. Bumper is a bit different, but it's small details. Another funny thing is these vents. They're not real, of course, but it's a typical Gran Turismo design feature. So of course they kept it, but they included three little funky lights in it. The dark copper accent continue on the side with the typical Maserati Tridente badge. And we have these beautiful aero disc wheels that look stunning and are of course a standard feature on this Gran Turismo. And if we go around back to the rear end of the car, of course there are no four exhaust tips, which already shows that it's an electric car. And we have the charging port, of course, which shows that there is something going on. But besides that, it looks like a Gran Turismo. And honestly, look at it, it looks good. We have still the low roof, body shaping is exactly the same. This is how an electric car should look like. And you would think that the battery is lying underneath this car, like in most electric vehicles, it's uh, underneath your feet. But with the Gran Turismo, it's not. It's in a T-bone shape, so it goes between driver and passenger all the way to the back where it ends in the T shape which allows Maserati to keep this exactly same body structure as in the petrol car which gives this car a very low roof which is why we like the Fulgore so much that it looks exactly the same as any Gran Turismo out there. All right enough talking about exterior stuff let's go out for a drive and see how this thing goes on the road. All right, so we're uh, inside the Maserati Gran Turismo Folgore, and as I told you before, it looks exactly like any other Gran Turismo, which means any other petrol version Gran Turismo on the market. And that's a good thing, I like it. It feels normal, it feels like a normal car, even, of course, there's no engine sound of that V6, but besides that, Everything is the same inside. There's no freaky displays or dashboard stuff going on. It's very classy inside. And, and, and that's what makes this car really fun to drive. It just, yeah, it's, it feels like getting home, you know? It's a funny thing I do it automatically already. You have these beautiful yeah, shifters, like in any other Maserati, of course. But this time it's not to operate your classic gearbox, but it's to operate the regen of the electric engines. And you can play really well with these things. Even, okay, it took me like, yeah, not, not that long, five, 10 minutes. And it gives you the ability to drive with one foot. So uh, the one pedal drive is really going on very well because you have the possibility to really adapt real quickly your region with these shifters. They even sound the same, you know, it's, it's stuff like that that makes it a really nice car to, uh, to enjoy and even on, on normal traffic, it, it's an easy going car. Seating position is really great, sitting very low, I like that. Yeah, and it's, it's small details that makes you remind that, oh, by the way, you're in an electric car. Um, it's like the driving mode that says, for example, max range. That's something you would not find in a, in a petrol engine car. For example, here we have the small yeah, clock, a little bit of a sports chrono thingy, where we can change the display and get some battery information stuff. But besides that, it all looks and feels like your classic Gran Turismo. So it's, it's, uh, they did it very well in, uh, in, uh, in Italy. So uh, I like it. I really like it. And even yeah, with the pedals, it, it's, it makes it 
still engaging, you know, there's something going on. You're not just on the road and getting bored like, oh, it's an electric car. No, you just get a bit engaged with it and you play with it. It's, it's fun. It's a fun thing and uh, it makes you work a bit in the car. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good thing. All right, so regarding the battery, I told it was between a passenger and driver and it's a 92.5 kilowatt hour battery. So it's a, it's a pretty big one. And uh, it also has the 800 volt structure, which allows the car to recharge up to 270 kilowatt hours, which is like 100 kilometer every five minutes, something like that. So that's uh, pretty impressive. So it's really good. Uh, so if you're doing longer distances, it's possible to get really back on the road quick and enjoy it like, like a, real, uh, a real GT. So, uh, and even that's, that's a cool thing because uh, you have these independent motors on the rear axle of the car that you can feel if you're going pretty fast and in sport mode because GT mode is limited to only 80% power of the car and uh, sport mode goes up to 100% so you can fully enjoy that 760 horsepower and you can feel the rear end helping to turn you around the corner because with the torque vectoring the electric motor is going to play a little to give you a better yeah a better cornering potential and I found it out yeah, a little before going a little fast through a corner and the car felt super stable uh, gives a lot of confidence so even if you're driving yeah, a little fast even on cold days like these no problem at all the car helps you turn around real quick they did a, a great job and even then with the driving modes um, the difference is small but still it's if you're driving faster than you should maybe you can feel it. So you have the GT, of course, car always starts in GT, just like any other Maserati. Then you have the Sport, and then you can go up to Corsa. It even has a drift mode, uh, which we are not gonna test on the public roads this time. But of course, the dash changes a bit. Uh, you can feel immediately throttle response getting a, a serious, serious better. So it's all, again, small details that makes you really enjoy this car. So about the numbers, because we got asked about the numbers in the last video, so we will definitely share them this time. 0 to 100 is seriously impressive because it's 2.7 to 100 kilometers per hour, which is faster than the Trofeo, of course. Because, yeah, fully electric and torque right away available, so yeah, it, it, it's super fast. And top speed is 320 kilometers per hour, so that's very decent numbers. Yeah, for a car that weighs still plus to 2.2 tons plus. They really did something impressive uh, in Italy with this thing. And of course, it also makes us dream about little upcoming cars because this is not going to be the only fully electric car of Maserati. Uh, we have the Grecale, which is coming up shortly. And then of course, the Gran Cabrio, so the convertible version of this one, is going to be fully electric. Of course, these cars will always have a petrol engine and fully electric version but again it's a nice thing that customers have the ability to choose and don't have to yeah be in a disadvantage because they choose an electric car and then it has a different styling and it looks different and it drives differently you know it's it's all quite the same and that's a really good thing uh, they did at Maserati it's a really good electric car and then again you might think yeah but an electric car and blah 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 and blah, blah and this and that Sure, I understand, but you need to look at this like this. If you, use, if you want to use a beautiful car as a daily driver with all the luxury and everything you want, this is a perfect solution. And of course, I'm not telling that you should go on uh, the, the craziest road trip of your life with it, uh, going to the Alps, whatever. No, but as a daily driver, this is really a good thing. And then, of course, in your garage, Get yourself uh, maybe an MC20 to enjoy yourself in the weekend uh, or to go for a trip uh, with, uh, with your buddies um, or even an old Gran Turismo because it's still a, a, an incredible car. It's gorgeous, it sounds great, um, it's, it, it, it dates from 2007, it's, it, it's an old car but still it looks really good. It makes this thing really enjoyable during yeah, long journeys, if you want to, uh, to do just some highway, then, then this is a, a really great car. You have space for four people. It's again, super quiet. It's 
insanely fast if you wanted to. So I think it really has a, a, a good purpose in the, in the automotive world. And somehow it's, it's, it's a one of a kind for, for the moment because there's not a real comp competition. Definitely if you look at the coupé market, because coupés are like, of this genre are already a bit of a dying breed, so I'm happy Maserati is still pushing on these cars because we, we just love them, which kind of makes it the first electric luxury sports car. So it's, it's really one of a kind. Hey, it feels luxurious, it's, it's, it's a good place to be in. And it, it drives because we drove the, the Trofeo, of course, just to check the difference real quickly. And somehow, I think, in, as a daily driver, I would prefer this. Because when you're on the road, you just want yeah, you just want a quiet place, you know, you got 10,000 phone calls to do, uh, traffic is already noisy enough, and if you're not stuck in traffic, then, then, then this is really uh, the perfect option for you. It's a very good car, and again, I'm not touching the brake. That's <laughs> super cool. Not touching it, just playing with the pedals. It's absolutely crazy how they how they managed to, to get it so right, that, uh, that one pedal driving feeling. Because it's not too much and, and you don't feel, if you brake, if you brake, you don't feel the moment when it changes to the, from the region to the actual brakes, because some cars have issues with that, that you know you're, you're in the region zone and then <coughs> it slaps on the brakes, but this, it's all real gentle and now I'm driving in GT mode again and somehow it's my, it's my favorite driving mode because you know, air suspension is doing its thing, it's working pretty fine on the roads. Of course we're in Belgium so roads are always 90% yeah, of the time terrible here. And, and the car is doing perfect, you know, there's tighter corner, feeling the torque vectoring a bit, doing its thing to help you around the corner. No, and if you want the performance, it's there because in a daily driving, that's what you want. You don't want to go up high in the revs and screaming engine noises all the time. You just want a car that has a lot of torque because that enables you to just go with the traffic. And if you need it, you just can floor it and you catch up. It's, uh, it's, it's exactly what you want from your daily driver. You know, and then if you want it, if you want the performance, then you just put it in Corsa and you just floor it and it goes <laughs> it really goes <laughs> Holy shit. it's really fast whoa just look at it it's a good looking car you know definitely from this angle I'm convinced I'm really convinced and definitely with the 425 kilometer range it's the perfect daily driver it gets you wherever you want to go, the fast charging capabilities, it's, it's a really good car. But if you're not convinced yet, don't worry, the people of Maserati Center Antwerp will be happy to have you over in their showroom, tell you everything about it, about Fulgore and the upcoming models, and I'm sure you'll love it. I'm really sure you'll love it. So thanks again to Maserati Center Antwerp for handing over the keys to the Fulgore. Thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you soon in another Curbstone TV review. Take care, bye-bye.